you know, I always say the, the day you stop learning from what you're doing, uh, you must just give it up because you're done. Um, I mean, every day is, is something new. And that's what's great about coaching is every day is something new. And you do learn something different. And it might be just something different about a person or it might be something different about how someone does something because not everyone uh, performs an event the exact same way. I mean, there are ideal ways, but there are sometimes I see someone do something that I would never teach, but it works really well for them. And so you try to figure out why. Well, you know, why does that work for them? But I wouldn't like to teach it to anyone else. But, but it's good to know why, why it does. So, uh, yeah, there's just so many lessons that you learn from, from your athletes on a daily basis. It's, it's almost incomprehensible. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Gentili. I am the assistant track and field uh, slash cross country coach here at York, Pennsylvania. I specialize in jumps, sprints, hurdles, and middle distance. Big arms, big arms, real big, real big. Ah, big there you go. That's it. That's two tight. Take a step in. Take a step in. I'll make it I always enjoyed athletics and I was uh, very active and I always appreciated the coaches that worked with me and I, I thought I had a lot of uh, knowledge and information that I wanted to help other kids learn. Uh, there were things that I always knew that I would do differently and I just uh, being a teacher was kind of another way to reach kids, especially older kids because I taught elementary school. So to work with older kids, uh, coaching was the easiest way to get, that was the easiest path to work with older kids. So it was just... Uh, just an, another way to be able to teach and uh, share things that I've learned over the years. Um, uh, yeah, do another one. Yeah, you were a little, you stuttered so you weren't, you were too far away. That's because you stuttered. <clears throat> You're eight, right? Nine. Nine. Uh, My very first year of coaching, like, this is a funny, complete disaster. Uh, I walked into a program that was had been around. big on outsiders, uh, so I was definitely a super big outsider, and I did things very differently. Uh, things were done pretty much the same there as, as it was over the entire area. It was a very uh, sheltered way of thinking, so I was coming from more of a uh, urban, suburban uh, type of environment, and so my, uh, my techniques were very different, and my style was very different, so I remember when I walked on, the first team I had were it was five girls and two boys. That's all we had. So we didn't even really have a full team. And the second year, most of them didn't come back. So I was I had to find other kids to uh, to bring to the team to get them to actually, so we could actually have a team. Uh, but it actually ended up working out pretty well after that, uh, as more and more kids came out and they saw that uh, you know, the, the different style was was good and was working and it was actually kind of fun. So, I think it was 2010 or 2011, uh, one of my athletes was at, at the Penn Relays Arm and she won the Championship of America in the mile. And, uh, and it, just, it was such a surprise, uh, a girl from a small town could do something like that. And, and it was in that atmosphere of all those, uh, all those people, it was actually a funny story. It was, you know, I was so stunned when she won that I, I turned around and I hugged the first person I could find. And it was this, uh, this giant Jamaican guy. And a lot of Jamaicans go to the, the carnival, they enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's like their Olympics. And I, I hugged this guy and I was like, oh my God. And he was just like, it's okay, man, don't worry about it. She won, she won. I, like, I just ran down, I didn't know what to do. But it, that was probably the uh, proudest moment. My favorite part of the practice would be the actually the beginning, so, so the, the drills, going through the drills because things are generally pretty loose, uh, not too serious, everyone's just kind of relaxed and goofing off. And, uh, uh, so that part, and then, actually, and then when I get the workout too, that's always one of my favorites because you get the weird looks from the kids are like, really? You know, like, yeah. So uh, that's always, that, that's my favorite part of the, the suspense and the surprise. Let me get to the trainer in an ice bath or something. Okay. You or you got it. Did I get everybody? You, you're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. No, you're just staying together. Uh, the hardest thing about coaching a team, I would have to say, obviously, 
the track and field, it's the, just the variety of uh, events. Uh, so you do have a lot going on at one time, and it is hard to spread yourself over all of the events uh, at a practice. So that is the, the time management part of the practice is, is difficult. Uh, probably the, the most frustrating thing would have to be with uh, student athletes who don't seem to, uh, who, who are putting in less work than you're putting in. Uh, you know, if you're working harder than the student athlete, it is challenging to actually want to pay attention to them, honestly. It, uh, it gets you just don't come to practice for whatever reason or find ways to get out of doing different things. Then it becomes a challenge and then they become frustrated and then they want to know, well, why am I not getting better? And you're just kind of like, seriously, you're asking me this question. But, um, so that is a frustrating part. Um, you know, a lot of coaches want, you know, they are student athletes, but they would love you to be a full-time athlete and a part-time student, but it doesn't work out that way. Uh, but, so we do try to fuck it find that happy medium, but there are some students who just don't uh, they put in less effort than others, and that is, that's the hard part. most important thing that I would want my athletes to take away, mostly is in life lessons. Um, uh, you know, you have, basically in college, you have four more years of, you know, I call it fun in the sun, uh, and then you're off. You just don't get to do this anymore. I mean, after four, you hate, I hate when I see kids say, wow, well, I just can't do my senior year. I can't do my junior or senior year. I'm too busy. I'm like, you're never going to have this opportunity again. Uh, and to take the experiences on with you in life, it, it's so important. Um, you learn so many things. You meet so many people through sports uh, in, in college. That uh, you know, the, the biggest thing for me, even by traveling around a lot, is, is I was. I'm so happy I got to meet so many different people. And you, and you don't. Uh, you don't get that in your daily life. You have your job, you go to that job, and it's the same, you probably interact with the same dozen people or less every day. Um, I, I had a girl, I mean, this is something I learned from an athlete, this was probably over 10 years ago. You know, we had that, we sat down, we had our goal meetings, like write down on your note card, what are your goals for the season? And the only goal she wrote on her, her uh, card was to meet at least three new people at every meet she went to. And I was like, that was the neatest, and she was really good. She wanted to go to states, and she did. Uh, but that was her main goal, was because she just felt like I go to these meets. I don't. I just do my thing, and I don't know anybody. And she did. She would go to every meet, and I would see her just walk right up to people. Hey, how you doing? And I'm like, oh my god, she's creeping people out. Uh, but at the end, she met so many people when she was at the state meet. People were coming up, hey, how are you? And, uh, and she was like that. And at the end of the season, she said that was the greatest thing uh, of her whole high school career. And, and it, it said it changed, kind of changed her life. She said it turned her into a different person. Um, so definitely the opportunity to meet new and different people. Um, just the, the things you learn through uh, competition, failures, defeat, uh, victory, you know, uh, hard work, determination, balancing your time, all those, uh, all those types of things. You just don't, uh, you don't get that. It, uh, to me, you get less of a college experience. So definitely those type of things you want to carry on. Definitely learn lessons from your athletes. Uh, patience is the biggest one. Uh, I've always said that. If, if, if you're not a patient coach, you're just you're doomed for failure. It's just there's there's no way. So definitely patience. Definitely trying to see things from different points of view uh, because I know what I see is not necessarily what somebody else is feeling. So you do uh, try to empathize a lot and put yourself in their shoes to get the same type of feelings. Uh, to help, so if you know where they are, then you can kind of help them, and you know, even emotionally for your event. Um, I said, uh, lessons, I mean, you, you learn from kids all the time when you, you, you see them do things that, you're, that you don't think they're capable of doing and they do it. Uh, so definitely uh, holding high standards, to, so, to, even for every athlete, uh, that so you know, like, well, they're probably going to only run this time, and then they, but they run something better. And you should be, if you're surprised by that, then you're not prepared for it, and then you're not, you're not seeing things the right way. Well, I hope my athletes, the things that they say about me, I'm sure there's plenty of bad things <laughs> from time to time, probably more often than I like. 
but I hope that they they say that uh, I'm fair, um, I'm challenging, uh, uh, helpful, insightful, um, motivational, those type of things. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that I hope creative also. I mean, those are things that I try to. I think I am. I try to be. So I hope that those are things they're saying about me. And that <coughs> sometimes they, they don't like my creativity, but um, I think it's definitely part of something that is, that makes me me. And I, I mean, I hope they appreciate that. Um, I, th I think they find me approachable. And I hope I hope they say that I'm also approachable. Definitely, obviously, you miss everyone. Um, uh, you miss you miss the people. And it's kind of, you know, with coaching, that, that's the other thing. You have your four years with your, your student athlete and they move on. So it's always that, um, that situation of, you know, gain and loss. You gain someone, you lose someone. You gain someone, you lose someone. But you never forget about them. And they're always there. So I guess I would say, you know, I hope, I mean, I hope they learned as much, or I learned as much from them as, as they've learned from me. Or I mean, that's the other way. I hope they learned as much from me as I have from them. Um, and I hope they... I hope they enjoyed it, the, our, our encounters, our relationships. I hope it was fun. Um, I, hope, I, mean, I hope they realize how much that they did mean to me, because uh, it was, it is, they are my family away from home. You know, I don't have my family here. Um, and it is hard, uh, it is difficult, but when, when I'm at practice or when I'm here and you see them, it's like that they are, they're not just student athletes, they're, they're it's part of the family too, so I hope they realize that they really did mean uh, that much to me as well, and I hope I've been kind of some, some so at least somewhat, somewhat to that to them as well.